Hi everyone and welcome back to another Mixed Media Tuesday. Today I'm going to play with my molds, my resin, and I'm going for a three-dimensional canvas. I'm going to play with this mold by Stamperia. This is uh, designed by Antonis Tsenidakis and it's from the Sir Vagabond collection. I'm going to play with the balloon and the train. I did use that in another project, this uh, as a focal point, but that time it was a paper cutout. This time I'm going for a three-dimensional look. So since I'm playing with my resins today, I do have the windows open. Just remember to keep uh, your area nicely ventilated and I'm also wearing my gloves. This is a plastic mold and uh, especially the design that I'm going for is quite big. Nothing is nicely leveled so I'm just using my ink pads there to make sure that this is going to stay nice and leveled and uh, the liquid I'm going to pour into is not going to run outside of the mold. Now this is a step which is very important when you are playing with this type of molds and you will see why in a bit. I do have a couple of paper cups, I do have my scale there as well as my resin. I am playing with amazing resin today and I am going to use my scale although this resin is quite forgiving just because I have paper uh, cups and I cannot see uh, exactly how much I pour into each one of them. So I'm starting with part A and part 2. I'm going to measure and make sure that both parts are exactly the same. That's why I'm using my scale there. And you will see that I'm not going to pour enough. This is quite of a big uh, mold and I needed to mix uh, more. However, that's not a problem. You can always pour on top of it even more and you will see what I mean. Now I have been using this resin for quite some time now and I'm really happy with it. This is the amazing resin and it uh, cures in just 10 minutes. The result you're going to get is uh, completely opaque. It's going to be white. If you need to have for some reason the um, clear one, for example if you want to uh, pour into a bulb, then you need to use the other resin that uh, cures in 24 hours. It's almost impossible for me to plan ahead like pour the previous day. So I just have to do everything on the spot. And that's why I prefer using this type of resins. So making sure that both those uh, parts are nicely mixed. You will feel a kind of uh, warmth on your hands when this starts to cure. So you know when it is ready to pour. Now you can see how little I did mix up. I didn't even uh, feel half of that uh, design. So I'm going to have to repeat the same process one more time and pour on top of that. And by the time I did the mixing, the first one was already curing as you can see. And I'm also going to pour on that label at the top as well as a couple of gears. And here is what happens if you don't level up your mold correctly. The liquid from the top just ran off and it's now on top of my glass mat. It has already started to harden. I'm going to leave it as it is so that I will be able to peel it off later on. So I'm going to work on my white glass mat for now. About 10 minutes have passed so I can easily unmold all the castings. Great detail and if you hold them you will find that they are still warm. That's because uh, the resin isn't hardened completely. At this stage they are quite soft so if I need to I can manipulate the designs like cut off parts or clean up some areas where I had some overpouring, which is exactly what I'm going to do and you can see how easy it is to peel them off from your molds. So I'm going to bring in my scissors and I'm going to do some cleaning. Very easy, they cut like butter at this stage. And I don't want to use that top on the balloon. That's why I'm just going to use my scissors and chop it off. I think it works better for what I'm planning to do, since I want this to fit inside the frame. And now I wanted you to see that back to my glass mat and I can easily peel that off very carefully so that I don't break it. And the next step is to cover up all those castings with black gesso. I'm using the Prima Heavy Gesso here. This is a very important step. First of all, I want that to have that black shadow underneath because I'm going for a steampunky or vintage look. But at the same time, I want that to cover up completely that slick surface. Otherwise, my paints are not going to stick on top of it. 
And while these are drying, I'm looking through the Ser Vagabond collection pattern paper and I'm trying to find a background that could work. There are many of them that would work, but I decided to go with this map. There is something with maps for me. I absolutely love them as a background. And in this case, I find this really neutral in colors, so I can easily manipulate it and make it my own. I did bring my wooden frame here and I'm going to measure the inside so that I can cut out my paper exactly the size that I need to. This wooden frame, by the way, is about 8 by 8. So the inside is slightly smaller and instead of using the big 12 by 12 pattern paper, if you do have the smaller pattern paper, you can go with that as well. So I do have here the 8 by 8 pattern paper of the same collection and you see it would work just fine. Now to make this my own I'm going to spray a little bit. This is Distress Oxide and the color is Speckled Egg. I think it matches lovely with the colors and it's best for the look that I'm going for. I will make sure that this first layer is completely dry just using my heat gun there and then I'm going with another color. This time I'm going with salvaged patina, you can see it comes more vibrant than the previous one and since it is so vibrant I'm also going to add some splashes, really easy, just with a nozzle. It's not going to look as vibrant as it is right now, remember this is oxide ink so it's going to give a lovely dull and chalky finish. So again I'm making sure that this layer is completely dry before I go ahead and add the, the third and last layer and this time of course it's vintage photo. And notice that I'm spraying mainly outside of the paper, I don't want to have big blobs of uh, brown all over the place, just a little of that brown here and there will do the trick. So now do have my background ready, I did cover up the frame all around with black gesso. And then all I need to do is to stick inside that background. Now for that you can use any type of glue that you like, you can use your matte medium. Here I'm using craft glue by Stamperia, it's a new glue to me and I'm really happy with how it works. And I'm going to work on the focal point. For that I grabbed my acrylic paints, these are distress paints. And I'm starting with crackling campfire. Now always make sure that you shake those bottles well. I'm going to add just a dab of uh, paint. I don't need too much. And I'm going to color the top part of the balloon and the train. You don't have to cover it up completely. If you can still see some black areas, it's okay. This is not dry brushing. I'm just mainly covering up that part. And uh, it's just the first layer. If you don't do a great job, don't worry about it. I'm going to do lots of um, dry brushing at the top and it's going to have a completely different look. If you find that you have too much in some areas, you can always dab it with a paper towel. And then I'm going to let this one dry. Then I'm going to move on to the next color. Again, this time I'm working with Salvage Patina, which is one of the spray colors that I used for the background. I'm going to cover up only this part of the machine. And again, I'm going to let this one dry. Then I'm going to bring in my black gesso, and of course you can do that with any black paint if you want. This time I'm using a very stiff brush, the brush is completely dry, no water there, and I'm doing dry brushing with that black paint. Just lightly going over the balloon, the top part of the balloon, and this way I grab only the areas that are raised. And I'm going to do the same thing for the area that I painted blue. Dry brushing is such a fun technique and whenever I do it I'm absolutely in love with how it can transform a piece and make it look completely different. I love that it gives you shadows and highlights. It really brings all those three-dimensional focal points into life. Now this time I'm going with silver paint, again with the same brush, completely dry, lightly going all over that design and you see how it picks all those mountains and it helps that design come to life. Now I'm using an off-white color like vanilla and by the way any acrylic paints that you have at, at home would work with this technique. Just make sure that you have your brush completely dry, you don't want that paint to be too runny. 
So I'm going with that color over different parts of the balloon just to help it hi to help highlight it a little bit more. And if you find that uh, you don't like what you are doing, you can always use another color as an eraser. So you can go back with black and dry brush over that white area that I did. And you can play with it until you are happy with the outcome. So after playing a little bit with uh, dry brushing and these colors, I also did the gears. And I will also work on the label. Again, I'm starting with uh, the orange color. I'm applying this as a base. I'm not going to cover completely the black that I have underneath, but I'm not going very lightly. I do want to have that um, orange at the background. Once I uh, completely dry it out, then I can do the dry brushing, this time with a lighter color to help all those uh, letters pop even more. So I believe now it is readable. Time to put everything together. For that I'm using my glue gun. You can go with your matte medium if you like or any other type of strong glue. Now in terms of composition you can stick it at the center. I don't like to have my focal points completely at the center so I always like to offset them somehow. I think they look more interesting this way. And I'm also going to stick down some of the gears and I do have a couple of bolts from a previous pouring that I did uh, about a month ago. These are leftovers that I keep in a box and I can uh, just go through them and use them in uh, future projects. So now of course I have to cover up those bolts with black so that they don't stand as uh, bright white as they used to be. I'm also adding some touches with that black here and there. And this is a process that can go on forever. You can see I can go back and dry brush in different areas if I want something to look darker, to add shadows here and there. It's actually up to you when you decide to stop with that technique. And here is where I decided to introduce some bronze on the whole project. So I'm just uh, dry brushing again in some areas, not covering up completely everything. And I did that finishing touch because I have another project that I shared in a previous video that has similar colors and I think that they would go nicely together on my wall. We did move in our new house about a year ago and my craft room is still an ongoing project. So I do have some of my projects on the walls but some others are still waiting to find their place. And I think this is a great companion for the project that I'm going to show you in a bit. So here I'm introducing some extra silver touches here and there. And again with this technique it's really hard to know when to stop. But I did force myself to call it done. So here is the finished project. I'm absolutely happy with the result. Love, love that uh, focal point. And uh, it was really easy to put together to tell you the truth. So here is the other one that I shared in a previous video. And I think those two go lovely together. And it's finally time to find a place for them on my walls. So that was the project for today. I hope that you had fun, that you got inspired. Just like always, you will find the full list of all the supplies that I used down below in the description area as well as on my blog. Don't forget to like the video, it really helps, as well as leave me a comment. Thank you so much for visiting today and I'll see you all next time.